What's up everybody? Welcome to Shifting Beers. This week we've got some great information for you on the top 10 things to look for when you're buying your first project car. But first, let's roll the opening. All right, before we even get to number one and start talking about what to look for in project cars like this BMW 325iS right behind me, let's talk about today's beer. Bry, what do we got? Today, Andrew, we are drinking Brotherton Brewing IPA. This looks delicious. They're right out of Shimong, New Jersey, and uh, it says enjoy immediately for optimum freshness. I think it will. Cheers. Thanks for opening it. On out. to number one. All right, guys, assuming that you already have the car, number one thing is definitely going to be your budget. How much money are you going to allow yourself to spend on this project? And you're asking why. So, why? There's a lot of times that people go way over budget, so you need to get in mind a set price, whether or not it's $25,000, $35,000, $40,000 on how much you want to spend on this budget so you don't go overboard. Number two is skill level. If you're really good at mechanical but not good at body work, don't buy a beat up car. If you're really good at body work and not good at mechanical, make sure the car that you purchase is running when you get it. Because then you have to pay somebody else to do it. And am I still in focus? Awesome. Great. Great. Number three is purpose. Why are you laughing? Good, great, grand. Good, great, grand. All right, wonderful. Number three is purpose. You want to know exactly why you're buying the car. Is it to take it to shows? Is it to go to the track? Are you going to go on weekend cruises? You want to know what this car is going to be for before you get it. All right, guys, number four is going to be parts. You need to make sure that once you get involved in a project, you're able to find parts when you need them. Can't wait three, four months in order to get parts because once that happens, you will get bored of the project. Get involved with the forums, get involved online to try to make sure that you know exactly where to find the parts if you need them. Number five, where to find a car? You're going to want to start your search on Craigslist and the local classifieds because bottom line is you want to try and find something that's going to be in the area. Reason being, you want to be able to go out and actually look at the car in person and make sure that the condition you saw it in online is in fact the condition that you're actually going to see it in when you purchase it. If you can't find the car that you're looking for locally, you're going to have to expand, expand the search. You're going to have, you might have to travel 100 miles, you might have to travel out of state to find the car. You might have to ship it in. So whatever the case is, just be prepared to actually have to go the distance to get the car that you want. It's not that I'm telling you to actually physically see the car before you purchase it. Uh, if for some reason the car is out of state, you know, far beyond your reach, and you can't actually physically get in front of it to look at it before you purchase it, see if you can work with the seller and have them do a walk around or maybe shoot a video uh, of them actually driving the car. That way you kind of have a better feel for a live shot of what the car is um, before you actually purchase it. Alright guys, number six is going to be title. Every state needs to have the car registered. So if the car has ever been in an accident and salvaged and you can't register a salvage title in your state, you need to know that before you go look at the car. If it's got a clean title, that's great. Make sure that the seller signs everything and everything is clean so you have the title in hand. If it doesn't have a title, then you can't register that car to drive on the street. So if you're looking for a car without a title, it's strictly going to be either a track car or just, that's it. God damn it, fuck them. All right, it's either gonna be a track car or trailer if it doesn't have a title. Number seven, you wanna make sure that the car has a good frame. You wanna make sure that the frame rails are straight, that the car is, is straight. Uh, you wanna make sure that the car doesn't have any rust in, in certain areas. 
rust and, and twisted frames are going to be things that are beyond repair. You're not going to be able to get the car back to a good working condition from those sorts of things. So make sure that the car that you're buying, again, is straight, no rust, and just rides well. All right guys, number eight ties a little bit in with number three, which was purpose. So number eight, we're gonna talk about doing a restoration, being a frame off restoration, a frame on restoration, or just doing a refresh of the car. So if you're gonna purchase a car that actually has a frame and it's not a unibody chassis, you can actually pull the body off of the frame and fully finish everything from the ground up, then that is gonna entail a lot more work. So you need to realize what you're going to get into before you start doing that. If you're looking to do just like a, do just, just jujitsu. So you can take, basically you either do a frame off restoration where you take the frame, body, everything and separate engine, suspension, and the whole nine, you separate it all, restore each part, and then put it all back together. Or you can do a frame on restoration, which is basically nuts, bolts, everything you have access to with leaving the body on the frame. And again, if you have a unibody chassis, you're gonna have to do this anyway because you can't separate the two. Basically, the last thing would just be doing a refresh. So maybe doing some paint, some light engine modifications, things like that, not taking the frame or anything apart, not taking the body apart and just basically getting the car so it's running driving in good appearance and good driving condition. Number nine is stock versus modified. If you're looking to purchase a stock car or revert a car back to stock, you, don't, you want to look for a car that's not going to already be modified. It's going to cost you more time and money to get it back to stock than if you were to buy a car that already is stock. Uh, if you're intending to modify the car, then look for cars that already have the modifications that you intend to do to the car. If you find a, find a project car that already has modifications done to it that you weren't interested in doing, again, it's going to cost you more time or money to revert those items back than if you were to find a car that already had the modifications you intended on. Finally, number 10, community. Look at your local community of the type of car that you're looking to buy. For example, I've been in a lot of car clubs over my life of owning a lot of cars. And I've been in a fourth gen Camaro club, which was awesome. I've been in a lot of Volkswagen and Audi clubs, been in a BMW club, obviously one of the ones that is the biggest in America, the BMW Car Club of America. Awesome community. If there's a bunch of Corvette guys that are in your local area and they're a bunch of assholes and you don't like them, you're not going to want to get a Corvette because they're going to want to come hang out with you all the time unless you keep to yourself. So go out, interact with your local community of the cars that you're, they're all over the place. Trust me, they're in every state, county, of any car that you can think of. Get involved with them, go online, look at the local forums, try to figure out where you want to be. If you're on the fence with a couple of things anyway. And then go from there. Good luck and have fun. All right, guys. Well, that was our top 10 things to look for in a project car. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's a pretty solid list. It's a good starting point uh, as far as project cars go. If there's anything that you feel that we did not put on this list that you feel should have been there, leave it in the comment section below. If you have any questions, want us to elaborate on any of the points that we brought up during this sequence, leave that in the comment section below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and we'll catch you guys next week. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> That gets too much in box. Uh, Thank you. Sorry for the lawnmower in the motherfucking background, man. Anyway. Alright. Alright, good. Try again. Shorten it up. Okay. Not your dick, just the. Nah, we got that. Old film. Alright. Alright, guys. Sorry. I know I can go whenever I want. Don't buy a Dodge Daytona. You're probably gonna have a hard time. I'm not saying that. We're talking about fucking project cars and fucking button up. We should be in fucking.
fucking ratty t-shirts and fucking greasy jeans, dude. Like, what are we doing? Do us. Say, now it just looks like a boogie boy. You're gonna have to expand a little bit. Try a different county or a different state. Really? Is it like, from behind you the camera, thinking. behind the camera, no. you're spitting over this fucking game. We're defying no, cars. No, 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 then no, no, I put no, you in front no. of the camera, you're like, uh... Waste the battery. Add a little spice. Add a little spice. You ready? Oh, my oh. Bri, what kind of beer we got today? <laughs> you are queued up and... <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me I was cute. Alright, quiet on the set. Because that motherfucker sure as shit ain't. 